First item on the agenda is review and vote on the meeting minutes for June 12th. Do I hear a motion? motion? I'd like to make a comment uh, before we, we approve the minutes. Uh, there was, this, there was uh, we discussed the, the shed for the town hall uh, that the, I guess the Stork Society wants to put on, a, on the town property behind the town hall. Uh -huh. And uh, we had discussion of whether we should allow a uh, private entity to be on town property. And I think Jonathan made a comment, and we kind of left it as, well, we'll proceed with that. I, I think I'd like to revisit that, and I don't know if that means changing the, the minutes or not, but, but uh, revisiting that of allowing a private entity, uh, and that being just the one private entity right now wanting to be on town property. We've got other, other uh, town town functions, other town committees that, that use or that have used the center school and are looking for a space to put their 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 supplies, hardware, whatever you call it, artifacts, uh, and we need to consider whether more than just the, of one? Well, the Grange. The Grange oh, okay. is, has always been uh, in uh, town buildings, and they have. They have furniture and stuff, uh, furnishings in the center school that are going to need to be vacated so this year, say. Uh, they need a place to put that. Where is that going to be? Well, uh, so I, I think uh, rather than, than telling the Historic Society to go ahead and planning a shed there, I think we need to hold off on that thought. Uh, maybe Brian needs to tell them don't go by anything yet until we make a final decision on where and if that should be there. I would suggest that that's, the, the minutes reflect what was discussed. Right. Minutes are not supposed to reflect what we need to discuss later on. They, so I would suggest the um, minutes stay the same, but the agenda, an upcoming agenda item is well, a conversation about that. Is that okay? Sure. Joyce, how do you feel about that? Um, that seems reasonable. I'm thinking, though, that last time we we may have told the historical society to go take the next step, which is look at zoning and historic commission right. requirements. Yeah. So they, it would be a little bit like like reneging on that decision. But it sounds like you're actually asking about a bigger issue, bigger which issue. is should they be in the town hall at all? Right. Which I think is would be really alarming if they thought they would be kicked out of town hall. Right, I don't think anyone's saying that. But, but I'm not sure if, the way, if they're interpreting the minutes to say that they should go ahead and plan on, on having a building there. Uh, I just want to make that clear that we're still oh, discussing so you're saying it. We, you're saying we have not decided. And we have not decided and, and you could somebody could interpret that or they could the way it's written in the minutes that uh, this board is, is okay with that concept but 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 fred all i see in the minutes and, and maybe i'm not reading it like you are and i apologize but all i see is that we asked for a picture of the proposed shed right. um, and we but, see that uh, and we know that the historical commission voted to endorse it which is great um but i don't see well it says board agreed to move forward with this request again researching potential that's this board is moving well but there's no vote no but that could be, to me, that could be interpreted that we're supporting it, that. It's part of a larger conversation. I know, I know it is, but I wanted to make sure people then yeah, cause, I mean, didn't it, uh, get the wrong idea from that discussion that we had. So let me put a question this way. If the Historical Society wanted to put a shed behind the town hall, would they need the approval of the select board to do that? Yes. And. Uh, they just, just uh, yes, no, and any number of other agencies like the Historic Commission or the um, building uh, inspector could uh, turn them down uh, or tell them you have to do it this way or that way. But, but an agreement from this board is one of the things that's required. Absolutely, yeah. And I, my memory is that we, gave them that agreement and said move forward. 
I, yeah. so, and, and yeah. I was he's saying that they would come back and show us a picture and let they be and you know look at the zoning and the masses but I, that's what I feel like happened but I but we'd have to go back and look at the tapes well, if you read, you know, the last sentence in yep. there says the board agreed, agreed to, to move, move forward. forward with what this. does that mean? Do we agree with the idea that... We might have to look at the tapes. Because I don't understand why we would ask for a picture if we agreed to move forward. If we agree to move forward, we don't care about the picture. It's going to happen regardless yeah. of what, what it looks like. I, th I think the, and again, I think Trish will have to see what, see what was discussed, but I think the intent was that if the board was going to say this is not a possibility at all, it didn't make sense mm -hmm. to contact his own, uh, the, the building inspector and mass historic commission mm -hmm. if the board did not. Um, I don't remember um, if sort of a final vote was taken. I, I don't recall that. I don't that. think it was a final um, vote though. Yeah. But I think we were okay with, or the board was okay with the concept enough to have move forward in the in the, the in the uh, okay. move forward with the additional investigation as to whether it was possible. Okay. With so these other agencies. So, so the meaning of that isn't we've done a final sign off. I do happen to know I talked to Dee Bardwell the other night, and she knows she has to come back here to talk to us again. And at the time she just mentioned it, and I don't know. Um, if that's exactly what she had in mind, but she said she didn't have anything new to report back, so she wasn't coming to today's meeting. Right, and she called, she called Amy this, mm -hmm. yeah. this afternoon. So I think the expectation is that they do need to come back. Okay. So can, can that be reflected in the minutes of this meeting that no final, we're still, decision. No final decision was made and we're still waiting to, uh, discuss, or still waiting to resolve the issue or discuss it further with with the historic society and whoever else uh, may need to be involved. I think that's very personal. If the minutes of this meeting would reflect that. So no, what do you? No. I think after the sentence, the board agreed to move forward with this request and begin researching the potential zoning and mass historic commission requirements, period. You could add to that, no final decision was made. Okay. I, that would be keeping it really simple. Okay. Right. For that, but for the minutes of tonight's meeting, yep. say that we're still discussing that yep. that concept of putting a shed back there. Okay. So do we? Okay. Um, I so, think we can so I would approve the minutes as amended if there's motion to do that. Yeah, I'll make a motion. Second. All in favor? Yeah. Aye. Aye. Okay. 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 Great. Okay. Next on the agenda, um, I've got Karen from Diamond Shine. Uh, about the host community agreement for 85 State Road. Should we end before we've got a public here? For oh, I'm sorry. I, I went, I, um, I skipped something. Uh, sorry. Item two, comments from the public on items not listed in the agenda. Okay. Diana, Ruth, you. Good evening. I'm still the master of Twaitlet Grange, and I was informed of the possibility of the building and I have quite a few concerns about the building. Um, what building are you talking the about? Shed. The possibility shed. Of the possibility okay. of the shed. Okay. And I sat down and I, I have thought of many things like I don't think privately owned buildings should be on a public property. Potential leak, gas for the girl. Um, vermin being attracted by the smell of the old grease and the grill, perhaps entering into the town hall again, and very, very concerned of upsetting Mrs. Roop again. Um, I personally have just gone through the permit um, for renovation, well, not renovation, it's a new roof on my house. And um, the permit process has changed they have to go through the inspector's office via the construction person. The application was reviewed and sent back to the town collector to investigate whether the taxes were paid and who was legally owning the property. Then the, the inspector goes back to the construction person to make sure they're licensed and insured. And then I'm contacted. All it has to be done before the 
you can do anything on the ground. So that is a new thing. They do it electronically since March of this year. Uh, and if we were allowed the building or shed, whatever you want to call it, town would be setting a precedent for other private organizations to be like little mushrooms out in the backyard. Uh, that would be destroying the nice view, the nice outside of the town hall, and we had worked so hard and went through a lot of unpopular controversy on renovating, and now we have this problem of storage, which should have been thought of two years ago. Anyways, that's one of the things. It should also reflect the, pre um, the presence of the town hall, not, not some aluminum thing that it isn't in the right setting. It's like putting a log cabin on a flat open land. It should be in the woods. Uh, question of needing insurance and how does a private organization provide insurance on publicly owned property? Question of any snow falling onto that building, who's liable? Who mows the lawn around it, trims it? If it's a private building, it shouldn't be the town highway department on taxpayers' time. Upkeep of the building after these pursuers of the permit leave office or get tired of running their organization. Um, why did this all of a sudden come up to, for storage and how come that it can't be back where it was before. Um, I think that we should monitor how much we save at the town hall because we are limited with space. And I think the people that uh, were doing the planning of it uh, and the possibility of the storage should have been thinking outside the box and not causing havoc now. Um, is it uh, is someone from the Historical Society taking command of the building and telling us what has to be done? Um, it's not the old school building where only one organization was in and we needed to share. Um, I realize that the Historical Commission is not, you can correct me, uh, is, um, is there for the purpose of having a town committee or commission in the building so it can be maintained as a town hall. However, are they backing this application? You answered that. Um, my question is, is the historical, yeah, historical, historical uh, commission uh, willing to share any of the space? What size are we gonna get? And um, are they gonna pay some kind of rent to the town for the outside building? So these are just 20 minutes worth of thought. Oh, okay. Are you, are you willing to let us get a copy of that? Sure. Because I think those are some of the questions we have too about this moving forward um, as well. It and scares uh, me because I don't, I particularly don't want to upset Mrs. Rook mm -hmm. because we came so close to having a confrontation. Mm -hmm. And if she hears about that or sees it and can't see the view, or the Smiley House residents can't see. Right. It, it might be yeah. a. Yeah. So might you, be doing I mean, the wrong you, thing. Because you went to the trouble of writing them all out, I'd rather not have to go to FCAT's website and and have you recite them again on the screen. But I if you can give us a copy of that, I would appreciate. It. I'm sure my colleagues would want to um, well, have that. And I can email it to Fred. Or Brian, you know. oh, Brian. Brian or yeah. somebody just give me an email. I can retype it because some of it I added on when I was eating supper. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little yeah. spaghetti on it. Yeah. Yeah. You can send it to me. Send it I, to can write, I can write it for you. Yeah. yeah. And that would be good. And because uh, it, we're sort of at the beginning, uh, you know, last meeting, this is the first time they came to ask us about it. And I also am here. I will not be the master as of September 12th. Oh, who will be the new uh, Somebody know? from Deerfield. Oh, okay. And I said to Fred when he called that I'd be willing to fulfill an obligation to the town for a position if one comes available. Oh, so you're on a committee? Correct. Yeah. Oh. 
we will get the list of us together. Do I have my choice? <laughs> you have a bevy of options. You may, you may, you might have. To well, choose, yeah. I can tell you that I was a reporter for three years, and I attended 111 meetings in three years. And so you can really do anything, honestly. Okay. All right. I'm more partial council of agents. Oh, oh perfect. Mm -hmm. I think I'm old. that nomination could happen. To what? Council on Aging. Council we need some. I've been a council yeah. on Aging. I, I do believe we have openings. We have to deal with me, though. This is in the. Well, <laughs> <laughs> as long as we go to Hampton Beach before we go to Boston. Of course. <laughs> That's already on the agenda. <laughs> no. Um, board and committee appointments is like the second to last thing on tonight's agenda. Uh, could we pull up just the Council on Aging right to the front here? I would, I would, I mean, I've known Ruth long enough to have no reservations whatsoever with there being on the Council on Aging. Is that, is that in our packet? It's, um, it's on, yeah, it's on the agenda 5D. Um, oh, it's, oh, it's the, just um, there, right, somewhere. Yeah, yeah, so it's towards the end. Um, down here, it's things. Um, I, I, no, there isn't actually a, a list of, uh, of that Amy put together. Oh, it's in the printout? Yeah, it's in, yeah. Oh, it's in the printout. Yeah. Uh, Joyce, I would have no problem seconding any motion. Uh, yeah, I, I move that we nominate Ruth to the uh, Council on Aging. And I think I heard a second before. Yeah, second. Uh, is there any more, just any further discussion of that nomination? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. What else you want? What else you want? What other committees do you want here? Uh, <laughs> Tri -town Cultural Beach. Council? Tri Town Beach? Oh, no. Okay. All right. But if you think of any other than the beach, I'm banned from the beach. You're banned from the beach? Oh, I had no Oh, oh okay. I was, oh, I was, I was, I was being funny. It wasn't for tailgating. Right. Okay. So I know that Greens is a little, you know, they, they like their uh, their parties. Okay. No. Nope. These are just select board appointments, right? There's moderator appointments as well. Yeah. Yeah. Is there vacancies on that? Any of the boards? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. How's the cultural council doing? We just got one more person on there. Uh, it's not these, are, these are only the appointees that are up for. Oh, they have to be. This year. It's not a complete list of our. Okay. Which we right. really want to pull together. Okay. okay. Thank you very All right. much. Thank you. Thank you, Ruth. Okay. Thank you. All right. What's next? Oops. Sorry. <laughs> what's next is my jump the gun, and we can get finally get Karen up here. Sorry, we're we're running a little behind. Uh, so Karen's looking for the host community agreement. Yes. Um, wants to sign it. Yes. Why well, don't get to sign it? What? Uh, my understanding, this is the same agreement we had with um, Toro Verde. Uh, the Toro Verde, the Fer Verde people who are up in the Sugarloaf shops, um, and uh, except that they switched the name, the names were changed. I hope so. Uh, Shine Diamond LLC, right? You got that right? Yeah. Your LLC yeah, is because Diamond Shine was taken in Massachusetts. Right. Okay. Uh, or federally, yeah. Diamond Shine, but. Right, but for the purposes of the Cannabis Control Commission, you have to be a Massachusetts uh, Corporation. That is absolutely correct. Do we need to um, take a vote? And if so, that means I would need to uh, ask my colleagues if they have any comments or questions to go from here. Uh, as long as this is exactly what, what uh, our president has set, precedent, not president, precedent, mm -hmm. um, then uh, I, I think that's perfect. I guess I'd like to, yeah, I have no problem with, with the agreement. Uh, I guess I'd like to maybe commend you and the uh, traffic engineer that did the traffic study. <coughs> I think that is a very thorough, thorough job. Oh, yes. Uh, Thank you, Fred. He's looking at, at, at a, the ITE trip generation rates is really what uh, determines the, this is standard for, for traffic impacts of various developments. And I was glad to see there's a section in there on marijuana establishments. I think is that, is that the title? Yes, he was talking. Title of it. So this is yeah. from the engineering firm that we got. Yeah, from the engineering firm, yeah. right? And that is the national stand. IT is Institute of Traffic Engineers. Yeah. Uh, which is nationally recognized. And 
Yeah, even though there's only four businesses that, that provide information to that, there's, there's several more that are coming along since that report, so that's, so that's right. good. So I guess I really appreciate that. Maybe that should be a model for future ones to look at something like that yes. to generate traffic, so. Mm -hmm. Fred, and, and this has nothing to do with my support of the host, community host permit, but Fred made the mistake of bringing that report up, and I just want to encourage everyone to proofread these reports before they do it. When yes. the town name is spelled incorrectly. Correct. Repeatedly. Yes. Uh, and when there are other ty typos, uh, misspellings, grammatical problems, it, it drives me crazy. These are public documents. We're supposed to be stewards of strong education and it looked like it, yeah okay i understand it wasn't ready for prime okay. time no yes. i understand yep. i i do understand what you're saying yeah. though because it, it's been like that with the internet with the documents throughout it seems like a lot of those guys do the work but then it comes back to report writing and it's not right. yeah, they don't they don't know how to write they don't know how to write yeah they're in there they're, they're using they it as a format them. for every well, it's not even format. It's just, it's, it's just poor grammar. Correct. Okay. <clears throat> I agree with you. I don't disagree at all. Okay. I've read them. Okay. Make a motion to approve the post community agreement with Shine Diamond LLC. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Sign here. Yeah, this is the, the final copy. <clears throat> Are you guys going to have the song at the at, at your at your uh, at your facility all the time. Which one? Shine on you, crazy diamond. I think we should. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> if we see you coming, we're gonna definitely put it on. You know the song. Yeah, Pink Floyd. Okay. We're gonna have to make sure. All right. So we're a little bit uh, we're a little bit ahead now because we had allotted 25 minutes for you. Excellent. I did not need all 25. Um, is Ashley here? Not here yet. Okay. Um, then maybe we can go to the next item. Whatever. Whatever you want me. Okay. You want to just email me? Yeah. No problem. And then I'll just come back for it whenever. Yeah. Right? Not now. Well, you want to sign it now? Sure. What's next? Well, next is uh, someone from uh, NAP Advisors. They're technically on for 6.30, so they're not yet late. But we've got uh, five minutes before their appointment, so we could. We do scans. Uh, scans? Diana sure. wants to go. Oh, why don't we do that? Um, we'll go to 5A, which is new business, uh, to consider signing a lease on behalf of. Does that need to be notarized? This, this would be Diamond Shine, or Shine Diamond LLC. Mm -hmm. And that would be... Oh. Every year. We have an administrative moment here. So do I sign this again? Okay. And then I'll come back whenever you tell me. Sounds good. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Have a nice Thanks, day. Good luck. Thank you. Okay, you're moving. You're moving up to the head of the queue. Consider okay. signing a lease on behalf of South County EMS for the existing ambulance facility located at 88 Greenfield Road, Deerfield. After much conversation among yes. the Board of Oversight, um, this lease did pass unanimously. Oh. Okay. Uh, so I'm, gonna, I'm suggesting that we sign it. Uh, we, okay. we did a pretty thorough overview of what it looks like and what what changes need to be made. So I'm going to suggest we sign. Did the other town sign it already? <clears throat> yeah, we're the last ones. Oh, we're the last ones. Yeah. Okay. It's the only copy, so don't mess it up. All right, the pressure is on. Is that what you're saying? And, and just for public consumption, the, the money that goes into this is strictly, and I emphasize the word strictly, and, and singularly, for uh, maintenance, capital improvements, etc. Oh, yeah. uh, the plan is not 
to ever come back to the town saying we need a new roof because this money should sit in escrow for big ticket items such as that. And that's that's the that's the genesis of right. this. So it's not so much of a lease in its traditional definition, it is a a lease in terms of how do we make sure this building is maintained equitably among the three towns so that they're not coming out in hand right. uh, ever again. Right. So how what's the term of this lease? So it's one year, five year, what? Five. Five years? Okay. And so there there's an agreed dollar amount that each town is gonna yes. contribute to this? It's yeah. the formula I, I presume. Yeah. It's a formula, yes. yeah. And roughly could you say what that is? Um, it is directly proportional to population. Okay. It's like fifty, thirty five and twenty but not twenty twenty one. But per year. What uh, what's kind of the total oh. amount being put away what, what for maintenance of future? I'm sorry, it's three thousand a month, so it's thirty six thousand a year. Okay, and that the distribution and then it's going to be the fund that will take care of you know, building maintenance and upkeep and capital items when they come up. Yes, the okay. town of Deerfield is taking on that responsibility yeah. through this agreement. Okay, but that doesn't sound unreasonable. And a percent is constant for the five years, or is that going to change every year? I believe it's constant for five years. I, I yeah. presume, it's I don't know if the form, how often yeah, the I mean, form if, if, changes. If somebody wants to track the population distribution yeah. on every year, I, I know I don't. So. Does, I don't know if the IMA has any, any language for revisiting the formula at all. No, so no, we're going to have to yeah. review that IMA. Yes, sometime. I think there so. Are some too. Challenges As to you change. do census, yeah. and populations change, it we be this. Doesn't the school one change every year? Or has the option change every year? The percentages on the school? Well, it's in, it's in a three it's in a three year or something. It's a it's a for the schools they visit it every year, but for the school yeah. they're looking at school enrollments. Right. Enrollment, right? And they but do a every, uh, and that's easier to track. A three year average and three year rolling right. average. Yeah. Yeah. Where the census isn't the, the census yeah. isn't as yeah. yeah. So okay. I think we're good. I'm Diana Schindler, by the way. I'm the interim town administrator in Jerry. Oh, okay. nice to meet you. Today. I wanted to introduce myself anyway, so thank you. Um, so, Brian, you have the. You want to just. Okay, great. Happy. I think you guys should keep a copy of the final and just if I could take the original. You just right. want to send it out? Can you send it out to everybody? I can. I can do that too. I brought you also the just one original, just so we, just in case you need the okay. final. That you have that looked at by KMP and that's your, you know, that's the final. Yep. That was Sherry sent. So, if, if okay. you don't yeah, mind, I do would like an electronic copy. Of the Absolutely. I'll scan and send the whole option. thing as a document yeah. to you. Okay. Sure. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Happy for you. I appreciate you taking me as well. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Okay, great. Okay, so now at 6.30, and I see we've had some new visitors. Um, I think I'm, on the agenda it says Ashley uh, from NAP Advisors uh, is going to ask us about considering signing a host community agreement for the facility at 62 Christian Lane, which is a growth facility. Uh, Sorry, sure. Nice to see you again. I'd like to introduce my colleague, Jace Levine, as well, who's joining me today. Um, to, I guess, start with our, our goals for today, we'd really like to go over our conversation from last uh, two weeks ago, learn from you what your needs are, questions that might have come up. Um, over the last few weeks, we, we sent along a letter kind of summarizing that conversation. Um, so Jason and I are here primarily to answer any questions that you have and to hopefully arrive at uh, maybe an, even an informal agreement that you're comfortable taking forward to town council as we understand that you'll need to receive sign off there as well. Um, so we'd, we'd love to, to get as close to that as, as possible. Um, to sort of quickly summarize our, our conversation from two weeks ago, as you mentioned, we're aiming to open a cultivation facility uh, on Christian Lane. We just had a successful community outreach meeting there. Um, with local members of the community in attendance to talk about those plans uh, and to go over some of the, um, the building and design plans. Chris can probably share his uh, thoughts surrounding vegetation, which was something that came up last time. Um, and Jace can speak to some of the research questions that you um, proposed during our last meeting. Um, in the letter that we sent along about a week ago, we itemized what our plans were for the host community fee. Um, 
as we said when we discussed, we, we carefully considered what the possible impacts would be of this facility and overall feel that the, the net um, impact will be positive for the town. Um, but again, we'd love to hear from you what your uh, questions and needs are at this time. Why don't you go first, Brent? Well, I, I was going to defer to you since you, you were the, the uh, um, author of a yeah. draft to host community right. agreement to right. Lydia to see. Uh, and I, um, I skimmed over the document that you sent. Um, and it's understandable that you think that all things will be positive. I understand that. Um, but you're not necessarily, uh, and not everyone will agree with you I understand that. on that. And we don't know what a lot of the impacts are going to be. So um, I think there's, um, we had someone try to use that facility or uh, to get the, uh, a license to use that facility, and we did not accept a flat fee for them. And they, in the end, did not want to pursue it uh, after that for probably a number of reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think we just signed another host community agreement before you got here. No, they have no problem with the 3%. Um, we don't know what the impacts are going to be. And with that uncertainty, I'm not happy going down to what would optimistically be 1%, which is what you're proposing with your flat um, fee. So that's kind of where I stand. I, there were probably, there's probably other things, other details that I have, didn't look at as closely in your agreement and have compared it to what we signed before. Um, that's kind of where, where I stand. We don't know what the impacts are. Um, we, I don't have any reason to give you a break to do a third or less uh, in percentage terms than what other well, and what other uh, cannabis facilities are sending are, are asked to do in their own school. So, may I respond? Or would you like to? Sure. Um, firstly, thank you. I appreciate sincerely your your perspective on that and the context. Uh, we are familiar with the the other agreements. Um, and I know we, we spoke to some of your questions, Mr. Edwards, surrounding the financials. So I, I do stand by that, that there is a lot of uncertainty on, on our side as far as building out projections that we could 100% stand behind. Um, we are open to a percentage model, um, but we are also interested in having a conversation, if that's amenable to you, about what the potential negative impacts are. I understand that there's some that that maybe cannot be forecasted or seen at this point. Um, but I also believe and feel strongly that, that there are many that we can say with certainty are, are not going to be problematic. Um, we talked briefly about you know, the, the construction impact being very, very low because we're not changing the footprint. Um, we talked about the, the light emission that is currently there for better or worse being um, resolved in these plans. We, we did address the vegetation uh, conversation um, as far as employment of current especially current people working within the facility I, I think that that stands to be a, a positive if we can um, re-engage some of those individuals so you know again I, I respect what you're saying I just would love to hear from the board if there are concerns that you can point to or needs that you have um, so that we can you know kind of have a have a back and forth conversation today I mean ideally we're, we are open to to your comments and, and ultimately we want to be a favored business here that's actually a, a member of the community that you're happy with. So um, with that, if there are specific things that we can discuss, I, I'm very open and interested in hearing those thoughts. I, I guess my, I don't know how far I can go beyond Joyce's comment about the unknown. This is a brand new ball game. And there is, 
my cause for concern is mostly about the I don't know how to. I don't know how to really say it, and, and usually I'm pretty good at figuring out how to say something. <laughs> there is so much anxiety. So, and I don't think anyone. In, forgive me, and I'm going to take a leap of faith. I'm not convinced that anyone on your side of the fence understands how much anxiety is in some of these. Communities. I don't know how many communities now who have, have, have said, no, we don't want anything to do with this across the state. Yeah. And that reflects that anxiety. The f and, and I say this because I really want this to work. But we'd be crazy if we didn't embrace the reality that there are a lot of people who just are nervous. Do I think that ultimately it's going to be no different than having a liquor store down the road or you know hey if 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 Glenn Fittich decided that they wanted to make scotch here I'd welcome them with open arms but they're and, and it's kind of the same thing yeah. that being said there's no anxiety around scotch yep. there's anxiety around marijuana cultivation nobody can do anything about it except let time so I'm personally very comfortable with a, with a percentage. Now, if we were creative, and, and I don't want this to take an inordinate amount of time, but if we really put our, our thinking caps on, could we cap that? You know, if you guys are... are, are cap it at 3%, I have no problem. Well, right, but, but let, me, let me just finish the... Let's say that they're... That they're and, and forgive me, is the 3% gross or net? Gross. 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 Let's say that all of a sudden this company's doing a half a million dollars, I mean, a half, you know, $500 million, a, 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 some huge amount of money. I don't know what the impact would be. If you're doing that kind of business, there is going to be a community impact that we can't even envision. So. I, I do believe that the percentage is, is fair because because of the potential for this to be a, a, a huge business and if you're doing that kind of business. And I'm I'm picking a big number obviously. Traffic's gonna be more, employees are gonna be more. It's just gonna be a bigger operation. And we all know that when businesses grow in any community, there is an impact. When Yankee Candle grew, there was an impact to Deerfield. There just was yep. positive. Negative. There just was. So, you know, if 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 some company decided to headquarter in Waitley, all of a sudden there would be an impact. So, I, I got to tell you, I, I'm not comfortable having some of our host agreements being a percentage, and then other host agreements being not a percentage, being a flat fee. I understand. And the unknown, and we would look like hypocrites. So. That's fair. Yeah. I guess I like to. Comment a little on the the impacts. You talked about the, the impacts and, and maybe how much that would be a dollar amount on the town. Well, there, there's one impact here that that is coming about that you may not be probably not aware of that we're starting to address is that intersection. You're going to be close to the most dangerous intersection in Franklin County as of today, Christian Lane State Road. You're proposing access to State Road near that intersection and also Christian Lane. We're just starting a study to figure out what to do with that intersection. Something needs to be done. There's accidents there. Trucks are having turning movement problems. Uh, it's just the potential for something serious to happen is there today. With your increased traffic, that's going to make it even more worse situation there. So. Uh, not only on Christian Lane, but on State Road, State Highway. So, and that is, is going to be, it's not going to be an inexpensive uh, pavement striping or traffic signal. It's going to be more design uh, excavation work that's going to cost several hundred thousands of dollars. We haven't even got into that figure, but there is a potential impact on that intersection, major intersection in town. 
It serves our, our community. Uh, our fire police and highway department are right near that interchange. You're gonna add traffic to that. Something needs to be done. If you, uh, I'm not objecting to you buying the property and setting up your business, but your increased traffic is gonna impact that intersection. That's gonna be a direct impact. We know that because it is a problem today. Um, to comment on that quickly, I, I would like to say in the first year to say three years of operation, I don't expect an increase in traffic because I, I believe our employee count will be very comparable, although I do want to acknowledge that it's a perpetual year-long harvest relative right. to a seasonal harvest, so there's there's certainly an acknowledgement of that. Right. Um, I think, you know, to speak to, to both, to all of you, our, our, our interest is in, you know, developing something that's, that's equitable to the town and equitable to the business. Um, from a business perspective, you know, cycling back to what we talked about two weeks ago, it's, it's an interesting uh, position to be in as business owners. To your point, this is a completely new ball game. And so while we have you know, some data from other places, there's, a, there's just a lot of unknowns um, related to the market, related to our role in that market. And so I think the concern for us, and, and likely a concern shared by any other business that would be presenting this to you, is you know, that 3% that is, it's, it's very hard to wrap your arms around because of what that could represent for, for better or worse, and so. I don't have any trouble wrapping my arms around the meaning of 3%. It's not the what 3% represents, it's more, you know, the, the spirit of the program, as you as you know, is to offset direct costs that our business um, poses to the community. And so we're we're deeply committed and, and very interested in understanding, you know, how where where what those costs are going to be. I understand that there's unknowns as well, and, and we're certainly looking to put something together that um, can accommodate those unknowns. I think you know the, the counter is that at some point we'll all need to look at what exactly those costs were and, and what those costs um, represented from a dollar standpoint in the town. And so this, you know, the spirit of this program was to make sure that we were contributing and all these businesses are contributing positively to the towns where they're operating and we don't want to be any different from that. Um, but we, you know, we do want to make sure we're aligned with the town that we're working in as far as what you know what what those concerns and needs are and what you believe that will represent from a um, a value standpoint so I, I think that's you know that's our goal today is to try to flesh that out further um, as I said we are not opposed to a, a percentage and we can absolutely but you appear to be opposed to three percent so in your terms you you want this to be equitable what is unequitable about three percent I don't know if three percent by itself is equitable or not. I think oh. that well, let's then make the argument that it's not. That it's not equitable. Or that it is. One, I mean, that's what we that's what we have put on the table because we put that on the table for every other group that has come before us, and every agreement that we signed said three percent, and I think that's equitable. I I don't understand, I mean, I do understand that what you proposed would amount to 1% or less. Potentially. Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a bit of risk there, though. But 1% is a heck of a lot smaller than 3%. Sure. So that's, so, so we're having a conversation Absolutely. at this point. Yeah. So yeah. that's... And, that, and, I, and honestly, I really want this to to be a conversation, seriously. Okay. So, you know, so where where we landed, the flat fee piece, just numbers aside, just the concept of the flat fee was, we're a business, I would love to know what that line item is from a business perspective. And operating the town or thinking about the town as a business, I'd also love to know what that line item is going to be for planning purposes. So that was the notion of the flat fee. Um, and we didn't start with the flat fee, actually. We, we did start with the, the percentage concept and. In, in looking at that and looking at the variabilities that exist within the financials of this, kept kind of coming back to this flat fee as, as a potential win-win. So I, I hear you and I understand that that's not the right move. Yeah. Um, but we did 
okay. arrived there after a lot of thought, and it was certainly, um, there was actual a lot of consideration from, from the town perspective and trying to put ourselves in, in your seat. As far as the 3% goes, or the 1% or the, or the 2%, um, you know, the big question was 1% of what, 2% of what, 3% of what? And so we started to think about what the anticipated costs could be, which I know we spoke about. Obviously, from, from where we're sitting, we've said that we don't see hard costs. I, I appreciate that you see some as residents that we don't have the visibility into. So I, that is part of today and wanting to understand the things that I, I just don't know about. I don't know that that intersection is as problematic as you're saying. Um, so we, we tried to look at this from a, what, what are those costs going to be and what is the, what is the dollar value of rectifying those? Um, and then how do we land there? And, and that again was the impetus for the, the flat fee. I think our concern with something broad stroke is that that, you know, that could be an, an enormous amount um, given that it is gross. And, you know, we want to understand and we want to make sure that those, that contribution is aligned to costs that we are actually posing to the town. Um, there are also many communities here that, that have signed 3% or signed flat fees or, or whatever. Um, I think we're seeing a little bit of everything in Massachusetts, but you know, at some point, I there there could be a time where we're looking at where those dollars went, and I want to understand that th that they are going to the the actual costs that we um, were responsible for. I don't know if you want to add to that. But, um. The, the uh, legislature has mandated that the community impact fee shall be reasonably related to the cost imposed upon the municipality by the operation of marijuana establishment. So, did you take those costs into account and, and when you signed the other? We don't know what they're going to be. So, uh, what That's do we do about this mandate? Do we just ignore it? What is that? What I'm sorry for? The, 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 the legislative mandate. It for, for the, several years. We may not really know what those costs are until it's a little further down the line. Well, certainly, you can anticipate. You we can experience. Well, you right, but we, we won't well, anticipate. You can talk to other communities. Everything. Right? Well, we won't anticipate everything. Well, it can yes, anticipate well, anything. But let me ask you this. You talked about. Well, I'm sorry. Can you anticipate anything? Yes, some things are anticipable. But I'm saying you can't anticipate everything. So you want to put it on us to justify every dollar of impact you might have when often the, the impact is a lot more um, it's it's going to affect somebody's property value how do we put a dollar count on that well, now when I don't know what that's the outside the, there's, 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 I mean it's 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 going to impact our town in many many ways most I can't anticipate and most I can't probably give you a dollar amount today so if we have to justify that I'm not willing to sign an agreement based on I have to justify everything in advance. However, we have signed agreements where we've asked for the legal maximum because we don't know. Okay? That's that's where we're standing. May I ask, ask a quick question? I'm so glad that you asked. Yes, you may. I'm the chair, so yes. Oh, thank Go ahead. You. And so uh, we always pride ourselves on, on being great partners with whoever we're going into business with and, and you know, we would love to go into business with, with you know, this town and, and with this project. Um, one of the things that I've been, been brought up to speed on uh, is that um, according to the, the, the statute, I think that everyone's talking about, is that um, there is a, uh, there needs to be a justification down the line, right, eventually, that, uh, that, that these costs go towards an impact that the business is, is causing, right? And one of the things that we don't want to see, right, is that down the line, let's say that we do get into a situation where we are doing half a billion dollars a, a year in revenue, and the town is taking 3% of that. Where are those funds gonna then be held? How are they gonna be used? And, 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 and in a situation where they're potentially down the line, uh, you know, there's class action lawsuits that occur all across the state because you've got uh, 
dispensaries or retail operations that are dealing with price compression, which we're seeing in other states that we're, we've operated in, they're now trying to figure out how they can recoup those expenses. Uh, and, and one of those things that they're gonna be looking at are these agreements, right? And under the legislature, from my understanding, there's a mandate that the, that the town has to then present evidence of the things that they've spent on. But not in advance. Not in advance. Because I don't know how many police officers will have to. 100%. I don't. I mean, I, I don't know. And, and and we and we totally respect and understand that. And safety is a huge, huge priority for us. What we don't want to see is there turn into turns into a situation three years from now, four years from now, five years from now, where there has been this massive windfall that the town is then responsible for showcasing what they're expensing. Well, can I join you, mind? Sure, sure. Good. Or at least we want to make you aware of it if you if you're right. not aware of it. I appreciate your concern for the well-being of the town, but I'm not sure it's, you shouldn't worry about our well-being. That's why we're here. That's, that's our responsibility. Of course. Um, you, you talk about the need to plan. And if we were to sign something with $100,000 of a year of planned impact, and then we found that the impact was, I'm just gonna throw out a random number, 500,000. Well, I guarantee the people in town are gonna say, good plan. Yeah. They just will. So it's, you know, and, and the reality is a percentage also, we, we could go, you guys could go bust and so could we, and we could end up with, with $5,000 instead of $100,000. That's, that's the, but then there's gonna be pretty negligible impact. On the, on the community but there really are a, a lot of uh, what happens you know if if and I get that I get that not all impacts are a part of this part of the legislature the legislature has some restrictions on what types of impacts well, it says, uh by the operation of the establishment. Cost imposed upon the municipality by the operation of the establishment. And so if yeah. suddenly yeah. Yeah. People don't know. if suddenly we had huge population growth because of this, I could make an argument that the operation of the facility was the should bear the cost brunt of increased town service demand. Absolutely. I don't think we have any disagreement. Right. Here. So, but my point is, it's the unknown. We just have. I'm I'm, I'm setting examples of why there's yeah. unknown. What's unknown is the amount, not the principle that that the company should reimburse the town for the actual cost. We all agree on that, can't we? The question is how and when to make that comment, that reimbursement. Right, say something. Sure, go ahead. I, I guess we're, we're talking about the unknown in the future, and, and, and you come up with some ideas of what the impacts are. We're not ready to say what the impacts of this are gonna be, because we don't know. You don't really know, but you want us to, to forego our ability to to have a wide open view of impacts in the future you want to limit what our impacts are going to be by coming up with this dollar amount and today nobody knows that and and i would think that that should not be your primary concern your concern should be operating this business making a profit and can you afford the three percent or the hundred thousand can your company afford that that should be the question, not whether the town can can survive using your money for addressing our unknown impacts. We don't know. Nobody here knows what that is. You don't really know either, but you should know whether you're going to make a profit or not on that business. And is the 3%, how is that going to affect your, your profit margin or operation of your business? That should be what you focus on, not what's the town's impacts. I, I agree. I agree with with many of those sentiments. I think 
in some ways I do think we're saying the same thing. We are concerned about that yeah. and, and because of the efforts that we have put in to try and understand like what is our profit margin? What is our estimated gross revenue? That is that is where we're running into a wall here because there are, these are unknowns that you know I know we, we talked about last time. Uh, we have those unknowns and I, I understand that you do as well. I think, you know, like I said, we're, we are interested in arriving at something that, that works for everyone. Um, I think the concern for us is 3% without some kind of cap or without some kind of conversation about you know, what that is. I mean, 3% could be in a, a substantial amount. Um, and because it's off of gross, that's a huge concern for a business as, as far as our unknowns go. Um, so I, I hope that you know, while we are- And, and yeah, it's a percentage. And you're worried, it sounds like, that we would get a lot of money to take care of impacts if you're very successful and that you wouldn't get that money. Because if you make the number smaller, then your profit margin is bigger. And I understand all of that. So you need to you want to negotiate for something lower than three percent. And we want to be at that that's where we're comfortable is with the three percent. And that so that seems what like where our conversation is and you're trying to talk us into saying we don't we don't need all that money, but not that, necessarily I think that should be not, but we not might. necessarily, right. but you don't. So, we, so, we might. That you don't so can, need you, it. can you let her speak, please? That's very rude. Go ahead. Not necessarily that you don't need it. I think you know what what we are part in part of what we're saying here. There is a you know there is a regulation around this, right? I mean, there is a responsibility on the town at some point to say you guys caused this need for law enforcement and we had to go and spend these dollars to get law enforcement. So that there is this premise that we're, we are thinking about. And you know, at the same time, because this is off of gross, which is still so interesting to me, it's difficult because we're in a market that's compressing and commoditizing. And I know when we talked through some of the numbers last time, you're seeing these right. companies really, you know, the point is that there is a shrinking margin there, and of course, as a business, I, I would be lying too if I said I didn't care about that. Of course, we're looking at that um, as we're considering all of the ways that we can use that profit, many of which will, will benefit the town in hiring and growing and expanding and all of that, which is not you know, quantified by this conversation at all. And that's part of why we're saying we do believe that the net benefit is going to be good from a tax perspective, from a jobs perspective, you know, the fact that we, we do believe that we are going to be incredible operators here and really good people to have in the town putting this kind of business together. Um, so I don't, I don't want to discount any of your concerns at all. I completely hear them. I just, from where I'm sitting, want to articulate that we also have some unknowns that are, are difficult to get our arms around. And I understand that there's a precedent set by other groups that you've met with and that that 3% is, is very important to you. Um, as I said okay. earlier, so we good. Then we then we have our part of the conversation. Yes. Then you've heard us. I okay. have heard you. Okay. Um, good. good. You know, I, I and, think and don't think you're not being heard. I just look, went and looked up the numbers, from, <laughs> the notes from the last time we had a conversation. And I, I so. again, throw out the flat fee. I do want you to understand where it came from, mostly so you understand that we designed that in actually in an attempt to be very respectful and very like planning oriented. Um, Again, it, this is your, running the town is your business. So I think there is merit to saying, we get this amount that they propose that will never be you know, challenged. I understand that. And guaranteed. And guaranteed, but I understand that that's in a, you know, it doesn't offset things that you can't see. So I guess my ask here, is there, is there room in your mind to discuss a percentage with a capacity, with a cap um, that, you know, gives us what we're looking for, which on our end is, is visibility um, and some assurance that, you know, we haven't signed on for something that we can't actually commit to five years from now because what we signed on for today winds up exceeding our ability. Um, is there, you know, room for the board or interest from the board in examining that together? Um, or is it 3% open-ended, take it or leave it at this stage? I'm not prepared to answer that. I'm not saying no. I'm not saying yes. But <coughs> personally, I, I've got a question though, because I'm 
you're talking about how you came up with $100,000. What's your gross sales on your pro forma in year one? Uh, gross sales in year one are eight million. And in year three? In year three, they are 40. So in year three, if, if your gross sales are $40 million on your pro forma in year three, and you have an unknown, and, and, and again, I, I know we're all agreed that we're going in, in a percentage basis, but I'm struggling with how much thought you really put into this, because if you think that there's only gonna be $150,000 worth of community impact, if you're operating a $40 million business in a 1,500 person town, you didn't put a lot of thought into it. It just, it, it just, it, it baffles me. So I think, I think, and I see your point in year three, I think our concern is year five. When you look at states like Oregon, when you look at states like Washington, what we're seeing in California, we're seeing very significant price compression as more and more operations come online. We're seeing the product, right, because it's a, it's a wholesale operation, mm -hmm. uh, become a commodity. And with more supply, come, you know, price compression occurs, right? And in a situation where we know what our costs are, I mean, this is gross, not net, right? Mm -hmm. In a situation where we're agreeing down the line, open-ended, for a 3% of gross. And, and, and so I, I couldn't agree more. I, I really couldn't agree more, yeah. but I, I'm glad you used it. Uh, the, the comparison is a commodity, mm -hmm. because would we agree that oil is a commodity? Yes. Okay. And would we agree that during the oil boom of the 80s, you had community impact of new oil rigs that are unfathomable? 100%. And then during the oil bust of a commodity. You had enormous community impact when jobs went away. Mm -hmm. Houses were empty. There was flight. So community impact doesn't just happen when times are good. Community impact happens all the time. That's why I think a percentage actually is incredibly fair because we're sharing in the boom and the bust, and we're sharing the burdens of the boom and the bust. Now, we have to, we're, we've got to be smart, as you've correctly pointed out, that we need to point to the impact mm -hmm. if times are really good. I think that the impact, though, and I want to look into what's viable, it's the impact of when times go from boom to bust. And then if we don't have sort of a hedge, if you will, mm -hmm. and you guys don't have the revenues that you once had, that suddenly we don't, we're not bringing in the community impact fees to cover the costs incurred by the town of the bust. With the, with the town, you know, we saw something very similar uh, to the cut rose industry that uh, occurred all throughout the central, the central coast of California as shipping expenses uh, became less and less to ship internationally. Um, what we saw was that uh, the growers in Ecuador and South America were able to ship flowers into the U.S. and that pretty much devastated that industry. Mm -hmm. uh, my business partner, and I think some of you have met Robbie, he, he actually did his PhD re research and that was funded by the International Rose. Uh, or the International Cup Flower Society. Um, I guess my question would be, you know, in, in, in suggesting that, are you suggesting that the town would be willing to um, reconsider in a situation where it was bust to help the business continue to operate so that, so that? No, but what I'm saying with a percentage, it's not an issue of reconsideration. It's the reality of if you're all of a sudden only making $3 a year, we're making three cents a year, or whatever, nine oh, cents a year. Well, well, you guys are based off of gross, so so so, so you need to keep that. You know, it's different if it's if it's a, if it's a deal based on net. 
Yeah, that's that, true. That's the challenge. You right, and, and I think and I think that's the challenge for us. You right? are right. But I guess I, I, I want you guys to understand that that I'm, I'm just citing example after example of example of, of all that we collectively do not know. Now, and, and I want you guys to succeed because I really don't have much interest in having a business come in here that's going to fail, because then we all know what happens to towns that have a bunch of failed businesses. There, you know. We can't have tumbleweeds in Whitley, Massachusetts, but there would be the equivalent of tumbleweeds. Of course, of course, and and, and we are we are not that business. Right? So, well, so our, this is a partnership. A hundred percent. And so I, I need to go back and look at it. I'm I'm not opposed to the cap. I, I don't know whether escrow. I, I don't know what what logistical scenarios we, we could create and unfortunately I you know Joyce is our guru on this stuff a lot more than I am on on, on pilots or not pilots but on on host host community agreements so it's kind of a pilot it, it, it's kind of, <laughs> yeah but it's so, not really it, yeah. it's different but it's so <laughs> somebody's still paying tax again I'm, I'm not I'm personally and just one vote I'm not personally not opposed to having these conversations but it's got to be incredibly creative it, it, it's not simple, and and I'm I admit I'm frustrated because it seems like it was treated as simple. And and if that's the way that that the that the uh, if that it came off, let us first apologize. That that is not what what we had intended at all. Um, was to come off and say this is incredibly simple, and you know we're just going to slap these numbers together and say here's what it is. Um, you know our goal is to work with with the town. Our goal is to. You know, this is going to be what we consider our, our East Coast operation, um, and you know we have plans on longevity. We have plans on, on being here and being a large part of the community, um, just like we have in our other operations. Um, and and we are open to being creative. We're open to working with the town. Um, you know, I think in, in our from our standpoint as as Ashley's uh, community, we're just you know for us. Price compression is a very real thing that is again unforeseeable in this in this industry, and um, you know having a percentage of gross is just a very scary thing for businesses in our position to you know to to swallow. You must have other costs that are go as a percentage that we, scale with the percentage we, of. We do, but it's based off of net normally, right? I mean that's well, like, we, but you must have costs of the business that have to do that scale with. The size of the business, regardless of the price per pound or other things like that. I, I, well, unfortunately, yeah. unfortunately, it's a so very they, manual yeah. business, though, right? right? Like part. with with automation, there are certain things that you can't do. Like our our most expensive um, cost of our business is to actually trim the plants, which you can't do with a machine. Right. So so that and so that that cost of that labor would be. It would scale with the size of the business. That would be like a percentage of the business cost is always going to be the same, going towards that particular item. It's a percentage. It's not a flat. Correct. So this would, this would be basically another cost that goes with a percentage, right? Yes. Correct. I think the challenge, though, is just that that because that margin is shrinking, even if our costs are rising at that you know at the same percentage, going from thirty five hundred a pound to Twelve hundred a pound. A lot of our costs are still the same. You still have the same building costs, utility costs, mm -hmm. personnel costs, for you know a lot less. And it's something I experienced personally in the facility I ran in Colorado, when that happens, you know, something's got to give. Something's going to collapse in itself. In a lot of facilities, it's that the quality falls. So because you don't have enough labor anymore, because you can't afford to have the labor you once had, now you're dumping pesticides on things, and your quality controls are just you know, falling off because you're going to pull those, you've got to find those dollars somewhere. And so all of this is to say we're, we're trying to find something that honors the fact that we're in a, a highly volatile business that's in an industry. So the bit, we're learning the business, the industry is learning, you guys are learning, like just a lot of volatility. And I think that's something we probably haven't seen in a very long time uh, as far as a new industry being born like that. And so I, you know, to echo Jace, um, that was certainly put together to simplify the conversation and to try and put us on the same page, um, but it by no means was it designed simply or without a lot of thought. Um, so 
so I, I definitely would also like to apologize if that's the sentiment that came across. I think quite the contrary. There was. I was actually, I probably overthought it in a lot of ways and maybe shot myself in the foot there, but in trying to consider your perspective, our perspective, I mean, I looked at, you know, Massachusetts compared to other markets, Massachusetts uh, regulatory process, the fact that it could be six months or nine months or 12 months before we even get a permit. And it's, it's just unlike, I think, any other business, you know, there, there's certainly commonalities. You could compare it to other agricultural crops and whatever, but there's so many other facets of this that are new. Um, you know, and, and limitations to a degree. If I want to bring in you know, genetics to grow a specific strawberry, I can, but I may not necessarily be allowed to do that in this scenario because you're crossing state lines, right? It's an interstate commerce, it's not. I, I have a question and you know, maybe Brian can answer it. Uh, is, is this, if we sign this agreement, it's for five years, this whole community host agreement, if the, they go either boom or bust, is this, can this be renegotiated or void or, or whatever, terminated, whatever the term is, it, or, or is this fixed for five years and, and, that's, and that's it? What do you mean in terms of, I mean, if, if they go out of business, it's, it's, Right, but if there's a boom and, and, and it goes up quite a bit more, is, is this, well, they're not going to want to negotiate because it's going to cost them more money, but so then there's really no other option for us, I, I guess, other than to sue them for more, for more money, right? Well, I don't, well, I don't think that's there. No, yeah. but you wouldn't want to do that, yeah. so, 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 so I guess you're, you're saying that it's, you, We're committing us for five. They're you, committing this for five years. You're asking what happens in year six? Right. Well, I, that could be, yeah. And, uh, I, I think that's hard to speculate. Do you, I'm it's guessing you're going to say no, and I, and I understand why you would say no, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Would you share your business plan with me? Uh, I, I'll talk to my business partner and uh, see. I'm, I'm just curious sure. because I'd like I, to see. I would say yes. Sure, I, I'd like to see. I, I'd like to see what you've. To, to Joyce's point, I'd like to see what you've anticipated. Yeah. What you have for, in, you know, it, any business has some, the some of the profits early on, especially if it's going to be good numbers early on. I know MGM's doing it down in Springfield right now. They're putting money aside for when revenues fall so that they can maintain their operational integrity until things turn around. So, you know, the, the, the minute, the, the goal when a business is having a hard time is not to just lay people off and to cut corners right away. That's why people make a profit. That's why you invest back into the business so you have, so you hedge against, against Absolutely. tough times. And we're, and, and we're not, um, and we're, we're, we're completely aligned in, for, in that front as far as, as far as the way that we operate. Um, I, again, I, I'm not opposed to it. I know that Ashley's not opposed to it. We have two Reading it would help me sort of wrap my arms around caps and and your long range model and what you anticipate in that kind of thing. But, well, are, are we open to discussing a cap? I thought we were, well, we agreed on, I, I think, a 3% and, and you asked if we would consider a cap. So I guess if we're asked, if Jonathan's asking for this information, are we opening this up to the cap or not? I, uh, well, otherwise, why do it? If we're not interested as, in the cap, as, why I do said, it? as I said, I'm not prepared to make that, to answer that question right now. Well, do we, uh, well, it's... Are, 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 are you prepared? I, I'm, well, I'm, uh, at, at the moment, I'm not inclined to go for a cap myself, um, but I, you know, this is a conversation, which I hope we can uh, draw, you know, today's portion of this conversation should come to an end soon because we have a number of other things on our agenda. But it sounds like we might have gotten to a good stopping point where, uh, I mean, your business plan might help us understand things better. So and we're saying we're open, I, could be open, could be open to a cap. It could be, I'm not at the moment, but could be. And, and okay. I just want to make sure it's select member. Correct. Is how, how right. Right. Select, select board, board member. Yeah. Select board member Orlowski. Yes, yeah, so I, 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 I guess. Yeah, I'd be open to discussing. I'm not saying oh, I'm agreeing that we need a cap, but or would consider cap, but open, open to discuss the business plan or whatever that Jonathan is asking for. Okay, I'll put it that way. 
Okay. So, um, you normally documents go through Brian uh, for open meeting law reasons. So, can you be really brief? I guess the other, the other, the other I'll let Fred go first. The other option is if you don't want to pursue that, that option is to just agree on the three percent, like like it's like we're proposing here today, and it's a I guess a done deal. Then. And I actually wanted to ask that. I mean, if that is, if that's where the the select board is likely well, to you're, draw you're, the line. Well, you came in really low. If it's really forty million in the third year, that's less than 0.4 percent that is 0.375 percent that's much much lower than three percent so and that's and i mean previous numbers were different that were quoted at the meeting two weeks ago so maybe that's the volatility in two weeks it's changed but I, that was a joke um <laughs> I but, thought it was funny. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, I mean, to your point, it is changing. It's a very living document. Um, mm -hmm. And we've been looking at numbers in Mass, mm -hmm. trying to compare them to other licenses in Mass, trying to compare them mm -hmm. to theirs in California. The first draw at our financials was very much built off of our California model. Um, I will say, respectfully, I have a better understanding, I think, of what's going on in Mass from a compliance standpoint, solely because that's what I do. Jace is shoulder deep in um, California. And so as we're, we're, we are looking at financials that are derived from different things. So there's certainly changes, although I, I appreciate what you're saying. The, the fee structure that was proposed originally was designed in sort of a weighted way to try and factor in good and bad, higher, you know, better years in the middle, topping off at the bottom, a slower start, depending on when we are actually able to put plants in the ground. So I hear you, we don't have to navigate the fee structure. Um, but my question was, if you know, if if the board is is likely to draw a hard line on that three percent, and if that is something our company was able to agree to, um, is this something that you would be willing to put in front of town council quickly? And is this something that we can, you know, expect your support in as far as moving forward from here? Because obviously, you guys are a very important part of our next steps as well um, and if there's if you can offer any sense of what you would be willing to do from a time frame perspective um, that would be greatly appreciated I, let me uh, thinking more about what we're getting into here and, and if we do go this route of asking for more information we're the three of us are still going to be arguing about, well what's the what's the cap what's the limit what dollar figure are we going to put on here we're, we're back to almost square one and whatever we agree to, you know, we've signed other agreements and they're gonna cut, they have the option coming back and saying, well, you agreed to a cap on this one. What is our cap gonna be? Uh, I guess I don't think we should open up that can of worms. Uh, I, I think that I'm comfortable with 3%. I, I don't see the need to look at, at other data to, to give a, uh, an estimate of, of what future gross sales would be and, and arbitrarily come up with a cap based on, on what? I, I, I don't know, I, I guess I'm not comfortable doing that. Okay. I, I would very much like to see, I'm, I'm not gonna say yes or no, I, I wanna see numbers because I I wanna be thoughtful about this. I, I'd, like to, I'd, I'd like to dig into the, to the, to the, to the plan a little bit. Um, with that? I think, that the, I think the closer you are to 3%, to 3% is extremely close to three percent in fact you can put an equal sign between those two there's no daylight between three percent and three percent so if, if but that it does increase the chances i believe of passing this board and i'm speaking for myself there what what other considerations beyond the percentage uh would the board like to you know hear from us i mean we're here now to talk you know about any other concerns as far as passing i yeah we have to get further into reading what you propose but you seen what we had proposed for other growth facilities and we there were yeah. yeah and there were um, uh, donations to local nonprofits mm -hmm. in there and they were you know scaling with the size of the facility um, the uh, and there was uh, donations toward education not meaning educating people about your product it's education in the schools so that they can hire a person who can do a good program or I don't know how many people you need to cover the schools in our district 
uh, that would be th those are the, and that's yeah, outside of the fee. that's outside of the fee we would we do have the two um, flat fees in there for um, charitable right. contributions yeah. and education which we, they we were, I, I admit, that's the part I didn't get a chance to read so th those are in there and and those respectfully I would like to leave in a flat fee model because that is something yeah. I would really want I think us that's to what we've done in the yeah, uh, other, yeah. yeah. We that part was modeled people. after um, past agreements. So, yeah. you know, I, d I think right. what Jace is saying, if if it's, you know, a cap is going to pose concerns and it's going to set a precedent that puts you in an, an ugly position um, and we were able to just sign off on that, are there other, are there any other, um, you know, concerns or challenges that you perceive related to our team that would cause you to hesitate on signing off on that, as, as, aside from the and, and the project as a whole. Yeah, there's nothing that comes to mind for me. There is an, any objection to the project or, or what you plan on growing there or whatever, and I guess you can, think you can showed enough information to convince us that it will be a, I don't know, a viable, legitimate project. I want you guys here, I, I, so, I, I do, I just, I don't make decisions based on something I received totally. three hours ago. So. No. So. Okay. Well, do you want to hear from your attorney? Yes. I'm not their attorney. Oh, okay. Okay. oh I sorry. I, I yeah. thought I, there are so many attorneys who come here. <laughs> so <laughs> Mustang. Oh, yes, it's the Mustang. Okay. Uh, yeah, if we can make it very brief, that would be good because we're getting on to 7:30. And I would like to simply make one observation and one suggestion. My observation is that we're all in agreement. The company wants to cover the town's cost, and the town wants its costs covered. We're all in agreement with that, right? The question, I think, is beyond the town's costs, how much money is the town demanding from the company beyond its cost? May I suggest the way to approach that might be to start with the percentage and say subject to documentation because the town has to document its cost. The town will be documented its cost, right. and therefore, so let's just say two percent or three percent subject to documentation. To to the extent that you're unable to document your cost, then that's that's returned. Right. Well, what, not, what if not the cost, cost doesn't come? To but then you get a hundred percent of your cost covered. I mean, if the cost doesn't come to five years down the road, then what do you do? So, well, I, I, well, I, I well, have you what you're saying. saying. That's sort of my point that I made before. Yeah. That's our that's our concern. That's why I want to take a look at what they have because I don't want to be put in a position where we cannot justify our costs based upon the revenue stream. That that's one of my concerns. So I, I but we need to be concerned with ourselves. Yeah. I, I appreciate your concern for the town, but I, again, I, I'm sort of done talking about this. I, I'd like yeah. to, I appreciate you guys' yeah. willingness to discuss. Seeing, seeing a deck or whatever you have, um, but we've kicked this around. Yeah, I think you know, that it, let's go to the at least for, the, for tonight, the, we've had a little more conversation, and it sounds like you want to see a business plan, um, and I wouldn't mind seeing a business plan. Um, and Fred, you don't have to read I, it. I, I, don't, I don't agree, but are we, are we back to that? I think you were, you were thinking about the question of Agreeing to the three percent or some other, or some other right. form. He was asking if there was if there was other concerns besides that. If they would agree to three percent. We said we're in. Are, is there something else where you're going to say? And we need to know, you know, that these other things are answered. And we, I, I think for us, we just want to know what all of those concerns are, so we can make sure we meet them or understand that it's not the right fit. Hopefully, it's not that case. So, you know, before there's another conversation, you know, mm -hmm. about the goal would be to come forward and say, yeah, we, we understand, here are the things you were worried about, here's our response, like, can, can we shake hands on this, or are we, you know, in two but, but different if camps? If that's not, a, not an issue, then the issue is, is the 3% plus, I guess we're looking at plus or minus, and, and, I'm just pulling up the document. and I, I guess my question to you again is, are you willing to, just agree to the three percent flat fee. That's it. And if that's that's true, then I I, I guess the, the three of us agree.
agree we could sign that tonight. Otherwise, well, no, 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 as far as principal terms, if we were to agree to that and then draft a draft an agreement and send it to send it over, you the question before uh, yeah. you guys discussed aside from the three percent, what other issues are there? Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't. See we that received now. this three hours ago, okay. so I can't answer that question right now. So what I, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't sign anything right now because, but I can guarantee you I want to make this work. I think we are crazy not to make it work. And I think you guys are crazy not to make it work. But let's read the thing first. Let's look at what you got. And we can put this to bed relatively quickly, but. That's different than what you're asking for the business plan to me. Of course it is, because the business plan revolves strictly around, well, mostly strictly around what the fair cost of doing business is in terms of the impact on the town. But reading this thing and digesting it okay, may yeah. propose other issues that you guys might be able to address, or I might not have any. You guys may have thought of everything, but I think I'll read this thing first. But the business plan will mostly revolve around the, mon the numbers, but there may be something in the business plan that lights a bulb saying, oh, what are the consequences of this with, with I don't know what. Because I, 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 I do want to put everything else aside and just make the, the percentage the final step. Because I don't want to come back and say, oh yeah, there's you know, this one other thing. Yeah, you need to put a dock in our pond. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we're... Yeah. Okay, I, mean, I can agree with what you're, what you're saying. Yeah, give us time to, to read this, digest it, come back. I don't know if it's two weeks is our next meeting is reasonable to do that and and uh, if you get the business plan in the meantime fine if whoever wants to look at it fine and we can be prepared I guess to, to act in our next meeting is that what we're saying well I think we can we can endeavor to try yeah. we can okay try to our next and, meeting. and we, I mean that sincerely I don't mean that as like you know, it, it, it's like I don't want to be having this conversation in August you don't? Know? Okay. okay. It doesn't go well over the computer. Oh, it's going well. No, no, I mean, no, I mean just, we, we, you know what I mean. I mean, it just, no, you guys I, need to get no. on your way and find out if yeah. this is going to be a business that works. And it, uh, as much as I'm sure you love coming to talk to us. Um, well, there's also a very long yeah, line I mean, to, to get our license to be able to come and operate. Right. So the sooner right. there's a line. Right, right. So, so and you, we don't want unnecessary delays. Yeah. Before you end this, I think it may be appropriate to ask the audience. Anybody else's comments on this? Should we ask? Oh, um, Go ahead Jeremy, share. Um, I'll uh, be happy to, to put that out. Don, anybody out there have? Ruth, Lenny? I did have some ideas. If they do, um, <clears throat> say if we only get 3% of X number of dollars and they disappear and we have a lawsuit, car accident at that horrible four-way corners there, who's going to be responsible for the remaining of the money? Is the town going to be sued? I don't think you'd be subject to First, on that. Well, on a car accident? I don't think so. That's usually your car insurance. Yeah, well, they're, and if they're not there anymore. If we're, the we're liable. Yeah, we're not, I don't. You we, you've gotten to speak several times already. So if you're, you have something different to say, please say it. But I've heard this, I've, we've heard what you had to say before. So please don't feel it necessary to repeat. My question, Seth, is recognizing that there may be long-term impacts, you mentioned five years or so, that you can't anticipate now. Are you still asking this company to pay the town beyond its the town's cost? I, I never said that. No, I didn't say you did, but, no, but, uh, but you just but, asked. Are you, are, you asking, are you asking for payments beyond your cost? Nobody said that. No, no, no. I didn't say you said, but I'm asking, are you asking for money beyond your cost? That's my question. 
Well, let's, 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 let's
reason for amending the policy. I, I think that's appropriate language. I think it's just making sure that we're all on the same page. And I, if not changing anything, um, it maintains our authority over building use as long as it is within the guidelines of what is zoning bylaws. Um, this would this this would put an end to this particular silly chapter um, of the so, so sort of the second part is is the letter that yeah. that yeah. that's yeah. been drafted by town council to the zoning board of appeals and you guys should have copies in the printout yeah. because I, I received that this afternoon um, and it's it's a communication to the zoning board of appeals it says that the board's reviewed their decision um, and that um, the board is restating um, its opinion or its position that the select board agrees with um, town council's opinion that says a policy of the select board is not subject to repeal or veto by the ZBA. In the same way that a rule or regulation adopted by the ZBA for administration of its affairs is not subject to repeal by the select board. Yep. Um, so his recommendation was that we do these in concert. One is the amendment to hopefully um, satisfy the the concerns of um, of the person who filed the appeal as a, as, yeah. as wanting to yeah. resolve the situation, but at the same time um, registering your objection to the decision of the ZBA. Um, so we had briefly discussed about whether it made sense to file a formal appeal of the ZBA decision, which we. Which the boys are crying. Yeah, it would that um, would be costly and silly. So the hope is is that this will end this silly chapter. Okay. I'm all for having Joyce sign. Move forward. Okay. Yeah. And that's this copy that was put by Netflix. Yep, and it, these are all the these are all the same. So whichever one you want to sign will be the oh, okay. will be the good one. <laughs> um, and also while we were Opening up the. And do we need to vote on the change to the policy? We will. I just want to mention one more. 7.1.1. Um, we've received feedback from, from several folks that um, it's easy to, or it's it's fairly easy to get general life event insurance in the amount of $1,000 bodily injury and $2,000 annual aggregate. Two million. Uh, two, one million, million. two million. Two million. Two million. Um, Finding somebody to do the umbrella liability of at least two million per occurrence is diff is more difficult. Uh -huh. um, so the suggestion is that that I think the my suggestion is that we strike out the requirement yeah. that it rather than waiving it on every occasion. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, but I could come back to come back to each meeting and ask you to waive it. Do we know? So it would be the change to seven point one point one and then eleven point three. What was the, uh, the, uh, the reasoning behind the umbrella liability? Um, I think, the, I don't remember the, the, the original, um, I don't remember the original reason why that was put on. Okay. Uh, I, I don't understand why it's, the per occurrence. why it's difficult to get that much in an umbrella policy. I mean, any homeowner can get an umbrella policy for a, several million dollars without asking questions being asked. I mean, it's very easy to do that on a well, this is business or anything now, for maybe because it's for occurrence. This is typically for one event. This but, yeah, this is for event insurance. Much. Right, if it's for right. a single right. event, then. But they could get it there for a million or two million individually, but it just seems strange you can't do an umbrella for It's, it's the same thing that would apply to your, to your, say, homeowner's policy if you had one there. You could get an umbrella that would cover that. Well, I, I, my guess is it has to do with cost versus expense. That's my guess. That it's tough to find because no one's going to buy it at the cost they would have to charge to, uh -huh. to provide that kind of a benefit. That's my guess. I don't know. But What's the reasoning people are giving? Are they giving you any reason why? Um, it's just that it was, they just said that it was more difficult to, to find it. They'd have to go through, I, I think they said they'd have to go through an actual, have to go through an actual insurance agency and 
it was just more difficult to get, and I'm sure it's more expensive. Um, but in terms of what we're looking to protect here, I, I, I think we're adequately covered with, with one million and two million. But yeah, and, and I guess I don't. Um, I, this might not be the, the time and place to, to discuss it, but if there are there is a group that has a, such an insurance policy, it's on a like event by event basis, a two million dollar annual aggregate limit. If the group has more than one event in a year, I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I guess I don't necessarily understand what all the details are, but I completely. Um, I, I, I mean, these these numbers are like what people have on their car insurance for injury and that sort of thing. Well, what's what's the liability limit on other town buildings? Our town buildings. What's our liability limit? You mean what what ours is? Yeah, what's the town's liability in general? We have a, I assume, a liability policy. I, I don't know what it is offhand. Okay. I mean, I, I'm not opposed to keeping it either. It was just a. Well, mm -hmm. a right well if it doesn't, I mean, but if, if, it, if we we shouldn't have something in the in the policy that <coughs> is sort of moot. Yeah. If it doesn't exist, it doesn't exist. I don't want it there for show. The question is, is ease of ease of obtaining it. I think was was the concern. Well, I it's get more it. difficult to get it. So I, I get it. So, um. well, could we for now do do this one and think about yeah, seven point one point one? Just put let's think about it and maybe uh, have some numbers for comparison of what our liability is, insurance is, and so on. That might be. Because I don't know if we're going to settle it here. I don't know. Yeah, right. Right. What's your liability yeah. policy for there? Yeah. It's, no, it's, and, it's under the town. And maybe fine. We don't have our own. Okay. Early doesn't have its own, I don't think. Yeah. I, I would like to see yeah, Brian investigate or find out what, what it is for the yeah. town. Or, yeah, or maybe someone uh, who's had trouble could tell us about what their, their trouble was. Maybe, well, maybe they'd be willing to write a sentence or two yeah. in an email to, to explain what that is about. Okay. That, but, but I think at some point I'd like to know what it is for the town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we don't need it next meeting, but I'll, sh I'll shoot you an email. In the future, okay. whatever you, you find, uh, okay. I guess I'd like to know. All right. Okay, so we need to vote on the change. I, uh, Just 11.3, right? Uh, yeah, so uh, I move we accept the uh, changes proposed for 11.3 uh, as read earlier by Brian. Second. Second. All in favor? Yeah. Aye. Aye. Okay. How about to send a letter? Uh, and to send the letter? The choice already signed. I move that we send the letter. It's already signed. Signed. <laughs> we'll send it anyways. Uh, do we need, to, we need to vote on that? I think it would be good to have it on the record. Okay. I'm, I move that we go ahead and send that letter. <laughs> okay. I, okay. And so it sounds like a second. second. All in favor? Okay. All right. You guys, someday, you know, we're getting to the point of the meeting where everybody's getting hungry, I think so. I think so. Let's um, move this. All right. Uh, next steps with potential reuse of the center school. I have not heard back from Mass Development. They said they were hoping, quote unquote, hoping to make announcements by the end of the week on their real estate technical assistance. Okay. Um, so so we may have that more to discuss next we time. Put it to July 10th or we could talk about sort of how you want to proceed with this. Not necessarily a resolution, but what are the steps that you want me to take or me and someone of the board to take in terms of trying to move this forward? Because right now I yeah. just feel it's kind of there and not really moving. Yeah. And, I, and I'm not sure how to make it move. I, I think we need a brainstorm of all the options. And that's sort of what the technical assistance was going to help us do. But options from if we keep it what its purpose is, if we tear it down what the land would be used for, if we sold the building, what are the options? That is a viable market for the building. I, we need, dare I say it, because we can't find people to serve on volunteer committees as it is. We need proof. <laughs> <laughs> I, I genuinely believe we need 
And I'm not sure the building committee on its own is the perfect group for this, but we need a group of people dedicated to exploring options, not exploring what they would like it to ha have happen to it, but exploring all options and coming back with data why this is an option, why X, why X is an option, and why Y is not an option. That, that's mine. But, but unless we have a dedicated group of people to do that, it's never going to happen. Uh, I, that sounds like a good idea, but I, I guess maybe related to that or that or another way of doing it is just have a public meeting or a brainstorming session and anybody that's interested in commenting on, on what to do with the building, uh, we would listen. Just gather information, and maybe I know the three of us have different views, right. so yeah. we wouldn't be projecting our views. Just right. we could go, we could uh, moderate the meeting uh, and just listen to what people have to say. If nobody shows up, well, they don't care. I guess the three of us will decide. How I think Dan it. will show up. Uh, I, yeah, I was Dan, just thinking Dan, it's going to be a meeting show. of Dan and the three of us. Uh, and, and specifically, it's we not going to be a cemetery. We've had uh, we've had some people that that have uh, shown some interest in it over the last few years. Uh, maybe specifically invite them to the meeting and 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 see what reaction we get from the people that are there. I, I guess to hear it firsthand from them because I don't think they've come to the board to to say what yeah, they I've would had like to do but. informal conversations. This was probably dates back. Too. Uh, at least two people who have expressed yeah. expressed interest, but in purchasing the building, interest in possibly learning what is the plan of the building, who may have interest. Yeah, I've had um, yeah. like interest in the interest in finding out what possible. I mean, there were, there were a lot of hedges there in that sense. A lot of hedges right. yeah. that that, but they were they in in the slimmest of all possible. Likelihood might be interested in purchasing it. Yes. Okay. So it wasn't just um, I'm a good weightless citizen and I want to know what the future of the yeah. property is. Correct. No, yeah, we're interested in. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be interested in looking. You want to buy it? Oh no. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, oh. I, I yeah. like to. No, I'd be interested in working on a committee yeah. to investigate. We got something. Yeah. Maybe yeah. 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 we should first see what kind of what comments we get from the brainstorming session. If yeah. there's a wide bunch. And maybe investigate. My only concern yeah. with the brainstorming session like that is that oftentimes data is not accompanying the ideas, and they're just yeah, yeah. 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 You got to have the data first. Yeah. Sure. Uh, yeah. Or it might be that that you, there's more than one brainstorming session. Yeah. There's one sort of high in the sky yeah. brainstorming session where you think about all kinds of things. Hopefully, a little bit of it outside of the box, and then you you take those and look at the data, and the data will make. Many, many, many of those fall by the wayside. But it, it, yeah, I think it might necessarily be, be a two step process. And maybe by then we'll know if we have technical assistance, might be getting the data right. well, that we would need for, for figuring out different kinds of uses. And Dan's been really patient back there uh, waiting as well. I was as trying well. to act like a lawyer. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I think no, it's, uh, it's, just the, it's just the thought, and Brian's well aware of it. <clears throat> I would suggest to the board so that they can look at the entire picture for the town is to uh, pursue with our cemetery commissioners when we're going to run out of space in the cemetery in the center of town. I think we're close. That's another and, and it's just so, so that you're aware if you're selling town property that you may have to go buy more property for the town. So. I have a question for you on that, Dan. And I yeah, speak I not of what I know or something like that. If we, if we were to run out of proper of, 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 of space at the cemetery, and this is going to make me sound cold and callous, uh, yeah. we ran out of space. Yeah, I don't know if there's any charter work or anything on it. And we ran out of space. It, it, there's no. I, do we have an obligation to go Yeah, we don't have the cemetery space. There's two other cemeteries in town. Right, but we're not there's obligated to, op to provide cemetery space, are we? I don't know. Yeah. I can just bring it up. It would be something that would come to the board. Yeah. Uh, as far as, as getting this on schedule to do something, and I think our our goal is to uh, 
prepare to be prepared to, to do something by the end of this calendar year because otherwise we're into well we got shut off the years. utilities right. and you've got to pay insurance uh, we've we've got s several at least two events in town coming up that, that may fit into this yeah uh, the the townwide uh, garage sale on, on September what 7th if if we can ask the people that there are departments that have stuff in the building to either remove it or make it if we want to have a, a garage sale there whatever is, is we think of value put it out on the lawn if people want to buy it or, or we give it away uh, do it on December 7th September if, 7th. I mean September 7th if it doesn't happen then and nobody wants it I think the next bulky waste day is uh, October what 15th or 19th there's one in there so you'd have time to dispose of it but between now and and September 7th I, I would suggest to you know Brian uh, send out a notice to all the departments that have stuff in there that they need to clean it out clean it out or it'll be at, all, at curbside or dispose one of the one or the other I mean we, we can't leave it in there forever and that's what's happening unless somebody takes an action and if stuff needs to be moved there I understand you know I know the Grange has stuff in there I don't know who else has stuff that's of value where is that going to go I mean we uh, put a shed behind the Grange, the building. yeah, the Grange has always had stuff in, in town buildings, and you know, it, which raises the question: Is there room in the town hall for the stuff the Grange has there? Right. Uh, well, I, th I think that's, uh, uh, yeah, that, that's an, it will be necessary for the building to be empty for us to do something with it. So right. absolutely. So that you're talking about something that happens in addition to having some kind of a brainstorming session and getting data on. Well, what right. uses might be really viable, right? Or what potential futures right. would yeah. be more viable? But getting rid of stuff is pretty far down the road. Yeah. So, right. and I, I like the idea of having a goal of knowing, at least much better than we do now, what we want to do with the building by the end of the year. I think right. that's a laudable goal because then, as soon as we get to January and February, it gets busy with budgets and so on. Right. So this is definitely the time to try and do it. Um, what time of, I mean, can we pick a date for a brainstorming session to invite people? I mean, how much notice would we have to give people something in July? We may get, um, I mean, no matter when we try to do this, it's going to bump up against people's vacation schedules. But, you know, it's just a brainstorming session. How do we solicit uh, people's ideas better than we've done already? Go ahead, John. I am going to. Um, encourage us to create a working group before the brainstorm. Otherwise, the brainstorm is going to be the three of us, and then we have and to Dan return. and Ruth, uh, whoever it is. But there has to be a group that is hearing this and taking notes and understanding next steps beyond the three of us. Otherwise, we're okay. going to spin our wheels. A working group might have one of us on it. Might, could, probably should. Well, I, uh, I can be not only a select board, but if you, you mentioned building committee, we still have the municipal building committee that... They should have a member on it as well, you, actually. If yeah. you a member or, the, or the, if you want the committee to actively involved, committee and, and historic society, well, they've been... Historic right. commission historic has commission, been yeah. uh, jointly meeting yeah. the town hall in the past, I guess. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I, would, I was thinking we, we don't necessarily want to give this to the Municipal Building Committee as a task because it may not be functioning as a municipal building. We want well, to look well, at all kinds of ideas right. but somebody should uh, as well, but someone from Municipal Building Committee okay. would, I think, would be, have good perspective to give to that working group. I, I would argue that, and I don't know whether they would, my guess is they wouldn't do it, but someone who knows town planning should be on this. I was going to say somebody from the car, but they're not going to devote staff time to, to this. But but someone who understands town planning, and I know we have somebody in the room who happened to actually, you know, work. Knows something about town planning. <laughs> Damn. Um, He's been planning this town for a long time. Yeah. I, I just I, I, might I suggest 
that we brainstorm a list of needs within the next few days and any uh -huh. needs, any committee need, not individuals, but skill sets. And we send skill sets that this committee should have to Brian. And then we can isolate who we know with, that would fill all those skill needs for this working group. That's my five cents, more than two. I know my initial thought is we're, we're making more of this than need be. Well, I think it's not going to happen unless we do a lot more than what we've already done. But I think that's. I know, but I, yeah. I also get the impression that people in town don't care. Majority don't care, other than the few handfuls they maybe have a, an interest in it. But the majority. You know, well, Fred, I, that, I really like that. It thing. never came up in discussion. We had it on our, our town meeting agenda, didn't we? To, uh, yeah, address you know, disposal of the building. Nobody raised a question of what you're doing. It. But you Occasionally know, Fred, we get. But you know, Fred, before comments. it became a hot topic and we were knee deep in it, the conversation around the town hall wasn't that big. It wasn't either. But when it becomes a pressing issue, then people say, oh, I better get involved. So I just think that we need to have our ducks in a row and we need to take it seriously because it that's a pretty visible building in town and the and the signature of the town will change with what happens to that building okay. but, but let me ask and i wasn't involved then and i know if you were when when we decided what to do with the blue school with frontier was there town-wide interest in, in discussing that or was it just school committee deciding with Frontier what to do? There was a lot of, we went through a lot before that. Yeah. And they, we, the housing committee looked at it. Um, we, we, you know, we, we uh, were looking at that uh, largely in terms of how to get some low cost housing. Low well, before I'm not talking within so the last 10 so years, 20 years ago when it first came open, uh, we didn't have housing committee then. Oh, in terms of selling to the Selling school? it to Frontier. Selling to Frontier. To tell them to sell it. Selling to get rid of it for a dollar. Selling it to Frontier. <laughs> but what, was there any meetings? Did anybody come and, and voice concerns? Or what are you doing? Or what options are you looking at? Or? But I. But you know what? People voiced their perspective afterwards. As what? Uh, agreeing with it? It, or? it, it ran the gamut. It ran the gamut. Yeah, okay. ran the gamut. Yep. And we and, and I want to avoid that. I don't want to. This is this is big boy and big girl school now. <laughs> that was a bigger school then. <laughs> yeah. So so. Okay. I will send Brian my list of what skills I think need to be on that, and you guys can okay do as you think please. about what. Um, you know, I'll give that some thought. Send my input to. So but so are we. Doing this before a well, meeting, a brainstorming. I think it's great. And, and I think that yeah, the, okay. the working group can get the, the brainstorming session going and promote it and okay. uh, talk to people around town who will be interested and in hopefully get that group. And it maybe uh, maybe the next robocall that goes out with that as well. You never know. We're forming a working group on what to do with the center school. If you're interested, contact. <laughs> just in contact. I would assume uh, the town contact Amy or Brian. Okay. Okay. All right. So I think we've gotten through the old business now. We took care of fine A. Yep. Um, I saw that we have some price quotes and award a contract for the diesel fuel and the number two fuel oil. Yep. Um, and we are going with the, the low bid on both of those, as I understand it. It's my recommendation. I think. <laughs> that we would I award those two CRs. Two. Um, I, I, this wasn't very controversial to me. Does anybody have any questions about the? Nope. Nope. Okay. I think we can go with Brian's recommendation then. I have a motion to. Okay. I have a motion to award the contract. Award the contract. For the diesel, diesel fuel, number two fuel, number two fuel oil, that's going to Harris. Yep. Uh, because they had the best price. And was there another? My fault. Was there another?
contract? No, we do the we do the gasoline one. Different. Okay. Uh, Frank okay. Okay. Council governments. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Just okay. just go back one step to the, the center school. Yeah. Are we all agreeing that Brian should work towards emptying the building by September seventh? Are we giving him that direction? Or, or are we we hold it off until? Well, if we if you're I I don't think we you fleshed out completely what would happen on September seventh. The, this year the tag sale is not going to have a central location where people no, will get tables. Right. So oh, you're basically right. saying have the town sell town property at this that's stored in that location. Right. And I'm not sure that uh, we necessarily, I don't think I agree to that. Uh, I don't think I know enough about what's in there to be able to say one way or the other. So we, I think let's have that idea on the table and maybe pursue it as we go along and be able to give it a little more thought, I would think. I think. Well, it's, uh, it fits in line with, you know, if we want to empty the building to the October. I think having a conversation with people who know they own material in that in, the, in that building is probably a good thing to do. Yes. Yeah. If the historical commission or society or whoever they are yeah. um, has know they have stuff in there, what's your plan? If I get that, right. I get what I you know. We're going back, right? Um, if, I, if the grain, I don't know who does, but you know if, if you know if there are desks in the attic still, if, who owns the desks? If no one owns it, you know. We should have that conversation with people saying you need to start developing a plan to get rid of what you own. Fred, maybe you and I can walk through it at some point. Okay, but I, I, I guess I'd like to set up some schedule to do that rather than just leaving it open because it's been open for the last year. Oh. It's been empty for a year and there's still stuff in there that if we don't, we don't press the issue to people, it's going to drag yep. on again. Okay, well then if you uh, and Brian will work on that together. Okay. But, but just remember that <coughs> the original conversation that we started with is tied what is really proposed as a solution to where some of that stuff goes. I right. think. Yeah. Right. So I'm not entirely on. positive, but I think. Yeah. Okay. Right. And why don't you guys create a plan? We need to bring it back to us for discussion. Okay. Another one. Or a group of two. Yeah. You know, there, there isn't a whole lot in there. Brain chest, stark, stark commission, this stark society still has stuff in the floor. Well, if there's not the town much, has still if records there's not in, much in there, then that's the, why are we spending it. 10 minutes talking about it if there's not much in there? Is to get these departments to clear it out. My guess that's is why. my guess is it gets cleared out to the transfer station, but that's right. my guess. That could be. Yeah. Okay. Maybe. All right. So next item is discuss uh, whether to schedule special town meeting for late summer. I, I would amend and that that it was that that late summer is a calendar uh, misnomer. It's typo. I guess. It's, it's typo. midsummer. Midsummer. So July. July. Okay. And I did not. I got an email with uh, something about where is it. The uh, CPA application. CPA uh, tonight approved the construction of a softball field at Hurley. Uh, it has gone through all the important committees and, and environmental and wetlands regulatory processes. Um, and so the last uh, couple steps, we, there's going to be a public hearing, although we found out the public hearing isn't necessary. There will still be one that's been okay. advertised um, uh, for a comment on I believe it's July the 10th yeah. um, and subsequent to that the only final step is a town meeting vote to authorize CPA. the CPA funding okay. uh, and my and, and the goal here is to get the pro the, the construction started in August, because we want to take advantage of the growing season, because we want grass done before the hard frost. And I don't mean planted; I mean growing, and it's being mowed, and it's being manicured, and all that. So, um, well, this, this is the 
the CPC have a requirement for a public hearing on their proposed that, that, projects? That's what I just said. They, they, there is no requirement. We are having it on the 10th anyway. Oh, well, they don't have a requirement, is what no. you're saying? Yeah. No. Uh, right. And, and I, from the maps on here, I don't really understand exactly where this is. Like, uh, it, it's on early. It's the, it's the southeast portion of Hurley perpendicular to the large soccer field. So where the old bar, where the old shed used to be before it fell down? Kind of in that uh, area. You know where the little oh, kids okay. play their soccer games now? No. Okay, well, but, but, yeah. but there's if the you go, soccer if you go east from the large soccer field, you know uh -huh. the, the eastern goal? Uh -huh. It would be about 10 feet away from that, starting there starting and from. going towards the river. So you're facing the river. Okay. Home plate will be in the south west corner of that quadrant and it will then and center field will essentially be the where the where those nasty dugouts are yeah that's so the front lot. where's the river down here i guess right no the river, the river goes all along here okay so the connecticut river yeah is on this map no no i'm just saying it's off the map it's off this in that area okay so um, I, is, just did, I just didn't think there was land. room for another yep. field at Hurley. See, see what creativity does. See what I thought at one point you were looking at other locations, whatever happened with. This is the best location you can imagine because it needs very, it needs relatively little movement of dirt. Um, Hurley is already equipped with water. It has bathrooms, it has kitchen facilities. Um, there are no trees to be removed. Um, it is, and it is where we have our fields. Okay, but do, do all other, are you saying other fields in town don't have them facilities? Well, yeah. the old softball field didn't. Well, in the fire station, one doesn't, doesn't do have, that. doesn't have water or restrooms. And how about right? the school? Where does the school have? The school has all those things, but you lock the school. And the school doesn't have the space that this has. I and mean, we've looked at this ad nauseum. Yeah, I, I, I think it, it sounds like, uh, I don't, even though I don't know all the details, it sounds like this has been thoroughly looked at, will be thoroughly looked at. You say the CPA is already recommending this. Yeah. And, the, and the design plans were done by the SVE, so it's. Is, is the rec committee endorse this or? Supported uh, this. It wasn't possible without the rec committee. The chair, so there's a response from the chair, the yeah. rec committee. I was the chair at the time, so yeah. Well, no, current, but we're moving now, I guess. But yes. Recommendation from, I, I guess I like to see. Yeah. Uh, okay, see the, that recommendation the, from rec the, the recommendation was made three months ago to from go to the, the CPA. Okay, to the, to the CPA, but now you're. No, that was the recommendation for it. And it went to CONCOM, and it went to Mass Wetlands, and we, and we, we already approved the design at a previous town meeting. So we've done all these things. Well, I don't remember. What do you mean at a previous town okay. meeting? Approved design. I, I, don't, I don't remember that. You proposed different or two locations, or I don't know how many, at a CPC meeting, and they, I guess that what I, well, a couple of months ago, this last time that they met for the their annual, their annual uh, solicitation, and you were to come back with a more definitive proposal, you, you did that. Uh, and they approved, they I, approved funding for the design work at Hurley. Was that just for Hurley, or was that was design just, work for? It was for, for Hurley. Because looking the, at all locations, it was for Hurley because the rec committee had had deemed Hurley as the most appropriate location because of the infrastructure infrastructure that's already in place at Hurley. I'm, I'm curious as to what your beef is. I, I guess I, I would most proposals, uh, and, and I guess it's going to matter of. What point in time do you say the the committee is supported or endorsed this? Uh, 
it, it, it's supportive of endorses it at the beginning, so you do the appropriate design work, unlike the way her he was created originally when the appropriate design work was never done. Okay, but has, so has this design work that has been done now, you're proposing, been endorsed by the Recreation Committee? Yes. Okay, so we should, we, so there should be no question of getting a recommendation from the Rec Committee that they support this. That's all I'm asking. You know, we just want it in writing. Yes, I want like okay. to see something okay. that the, the Rec Committee uh, supports the, this design you proposal. Seem be, you seem to be opposed to this. No, I'm not opposed to it. We, we just have to, I think all other actions we take, we ask the, the committee or chair of the committee for recommendation. Okay. And, and that's C all I'm asking okay. for, for here. And the CPC has already had those. Okay. Well, yeah, I think it sounds like it, it exists. Uh, or it will exist. It's a process here of coming up with this because people are uh, Yes, and, I'm, and I, I know, don't want I'm, them to come I, in. I just rolled off the turnip truck, I know. I, okay. I don't want them to come back and say that is your project and no committee has acted on it. I, I just I want to have yeah, all the ducks What I got to see to from, say, from the email he sent. I'm, I'm pretty hard pressed to believe that the CPC would approve something that didn't have the right. No, but it's got to go to, no. to town meeting vote. To right. do that, and, and I guess right. I'd like to make sure all the ducks in a row are there for that. I hate to see you hate to see it not go. You spent this time to come up with a plan, not go because people, yeah. for some reason, said you didn't follow the process. And okay. I guess well, okay. So right. that sounds good. My battery's low. So okay. Uh, looking at my agenda over here, I think there was one other item on there. Mm -hmm. um, Seven gives people a little better chance to, to get here. Right. Okay. Okay, good. All right. Next item it was committees uh, and appointments. And we've got to take care of one vacancy already. I know. Uh, so Amy's put together this list. And these are the people who need to be re Most of them. appointed. Yeah. Oh, okay. I don't know why that's yeah. historically been on there. So. Yeah, that seems like obvious. Um, so these again, these are the folks that the treasurer clerk is not in the panel and elected. Correct, that's right. Well, one of the things that we hope to do in that new software, I think it was last year for the committee software. Um, I think we could utilize that software to track these appointments. I think she started to do that. It will just be good to have them in one place and just spit out a list of uh -huh. terms expiring and then out pops a list. And in the past it's kind of been a little bit ad hoc so we're trying to play catch up a little bit. Just a quick question. The yep. interim accountant is, is that what is that a consultant that they hired or, or is that Part of FERCOG? It's, it was, she was hired by FERCOG. She formerly worked for FERCOG. She retired last year and they had.
have roped her back in. The police. So is that still interim, or is that? No, she's still interim. She has no interest in finding town accounts. Becoming unretired, uh, but she's just filling in for now. They're still looking for somebody. She's still even. looking. Okay, so she will be in the interim until the permanent one is selected. Okay. Yep. I have no problem with any of these. Um, and we're going to add, we, and, and with the addition, obviously, that Ruth is now a member of Council on Aging, so the list Council on Aging is no longer vacant. Right. And this list has, Joyce hasn't gotten there yet, but it will have Joyce continue on the Personnel Committee, Fred on the Capital Improvement Planning Committee. Do, do we appoint? Uh, Not, it's not, a, not, boss, not the police officers, the, the other, what's the other police unit? Our constables, time. whatever you call it. Do we appoint them or is it? Is that on there? Yeah. So the, were the constables on there, Amy? I don't think we appoint the constables. I thought that maybe the moderator does. Could be, I uh, well, it, 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 it may be that we don't appoint them this year. Maybe their terms are such that we're... Oh, maybe I... Yeah, I'll have to look to see if maybe I just removed them because their terms weren't up. Was it... Or, or are they elected? Are they in the ballot? Are they, are they elected? Oh, they might be elected because I yeah. remember voting. Right. Yeah, you know what? They, they are. They are elected. They're elected. Yeah. Okay, they're elected. They're elected. Okay, yeah. so they're not... Because okay. uh, what's-his-name was on the ballot yeah. uh, uh -huh. recently. Right. No. So yeah. I saw me got he, he got a lot of votes for something. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, sure. okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh, I was going to ask about uh, John Hannum. I know we had to get like an, it was an act of the legislature to get John to be able to serve a little longer. What is the? Do you happen to know what's the the <clears throat> the forecast of like how long would he stay in there um, and I know it's kind of short so then the question of succession comes up and I think that's being talked about so I just wanted to make sure uh, if he's we're reappointing him here that we understand that this is this may not be next year right so he needs legislation to last him to serve until he's 70 and this um, I don't remember exactly. It's yeah. probably two or three more years. Okay. I don't want to give out his age, of course. But. Oh, yeah, because I know men are really sensitive about That's right. That sort of thing. Well, it was two years ago. Um, right. Proof, so right. Two, two so it may be. Three years yeah. left. So there's, okay. I just want to make sure we're, we're, we are, I think we are. Not on this list is um, my servant on the Senior Center Board of Oversight. But if you're not up for reappointment this year. It's a we don't. Term. I don't think we have oh. terms. It's an annual thing. I think it's the page five. Is it? Um, no, that's the EMS. Oh, okay. And it would be Board a similar type of thing to the EMS. Is it South County Board of Oversight? What you're talking about? He's talking about scams. He's talking about the South County Senior Center. Senior Center, Senior Center. Senior Center. Senior Center. Senior Center. scams. Joe, could I add that? Yeah. I don't think. It's I definitely point. want to point John. It hasn't been on the cast list. Okay. And how about the municipal building committee? Is that it's, they're not up this year, I guess, right? So they, if there's no date on them, then they don't reappoint. They I stay. think the Mr. I think the municipal build, building committee is an ad hoc committee, so oh. as oh. such, I don't believe it has terms. Right. And if there's no year, just, just standing means people are in committee. But they're listed in the town report. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. right. I would move the slate. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, uh, so the next thing is town administrator updates. And anything not uh, anticipated for 28 hours? Um, sprinkle work should be wrapping up at the school. Um, I've seen, I know the companies are working. Um, so that should wrap up before school starts. Good. Um, 
Frontiers hired a new business manager. Oh, okay. And they've also hired a new facilities director. Oh, okay. To replace Bob Lesko, who's retiring in August. Um, the business manager is um, Jim. I'm going to blank on the name of the facilities person. Uh, but the Hildred. business manager is, is Shelly Pareda. Um, the facilities person is Phil Hildreth. That's who it is. I'm going to say William. Do you know him? You know of him? Um, I don't know. Yeah, I know. So. There'll be two big, change, two big changes that uh, uh -huh. are taking place with Frontier. Okay. Um, we're at Frontier. Um, well, welcome them and hope they will yep. do well. There's a new athletic director at Frontier starting this summer as well. So they've got so, a long term. Um, in, terms of, in terms of other things with Frontier, the Frontier, um, I got copies of the Frontier uh, teacher New teacher contracts for Frontier. Uh -huh. um, Waitley still being negotiated, I believe. Um, yeah. I don't want to say too much because right. most of those are victory sessions, but uh, an agreement hasn't been reached yet, to yeah. my understanding. Um, I think we can say that publicly. I think that's what I said. Yeah. Um, so, um, so we're in progress. Um, <laughs> can we say we met with Comcast today? We kind of met we, with Comcast we, today, Joyce and we I. We accidentally met with Comcast today in a way. No, we made a little bit of progress. We'll have another meeting on next Tuesday. Um, I understand much better the circuitry that's in place here. Uh, the man who I was uh, from Comcast, who did one of the three who was supposed to come, who did show up, um, he has a much better understanding of what equipment we have here. He did not know. Um, and he thinks that the things we need are things that they have either on the shelf or uh, scroungeable um, that, to get us up and running from here. So that's uh, the decisions that we may have to make moving forward are uh, things like, well, uh, do we want to build in cameras or would we rather keep the cameras on tripods so that we could go to other rooms if we wanted to broadcast from other rooms? Uh, or have that ability to at least record in other rooms. Um, I think we kind of envision something that uh, certainly no bigger than this table, probably smaller cabinet where you could lock up the equipment and have a you know a switcher and everything. And just when Dan comes to to set up, you know, he rolls out some cables to plug in and then sets up the cameras so that it won't be uh, a, a long and tedious setup but uh, do something so that we also don't have to block off a lot of space in this room because I think when this room gets used sometimes it gets it's kind of packed so a cabinet on wheels might be the perfect sort of thing to have for where most of the equipment any uh, switchers are anything you got to do in real time uh, but we can still consider that built-in cameras are in some ways very easy to set up right there right there so there are a few decisions uh, it's not clear which way is the best way to go, but uh, we'll keep talking with FCAT and keep pushing on it. Uh, at this point, if we get the work done next Tuesday, our next meeting can be live just by, with a single camera even, uh, plugged into that outlet. So we're, that is what we're going for. So how many locations in this building would be set up to go? We, I'll, I'll, yeah, you, I think right now this room uh, and the, well, the big uh, storage room, right, where the uh, where the computer is that's doing the bulletin board. Oh, we can go back there. Right, that's actually kind of where the, the heart and soul, that's where this line actually runs over to that room. Any place we can run a coaxial cable from there to that room, we could, we could do a live broadcast from. We can record, of course, from anywhere. But uh, mainly we want to get this room up and going. After that, it's just a matter of running a coaxial cable uh, through the ceiling, presumably, and drop down into whatever room you want to do. So that's uh, a much smaller cost. It's something we don't have to hire Comcast to do. We would do that ourselves. We, we could, if we wanted to, make one of the smaller rooms also be available for uh, live broadcast of meetings, it would be uh, a pretty small cost to, to do that because it's running a, a, a coaxial cable. Do 
is we all, well, when we decide in the final layout here, that may be something to look at. Yeah, yeah, so. Yeah, so okay. that was our, our, our nice meeting. Yeah. That's the, the condensed version. Two, uh, two other quick things. Um, Eversource field dealing for the regulator banks. Um, we can't seem to get all three of you. I would be okay if it happens on a date that I can't okay. go there. But uh, I, I think it is it, it is hard to get all three of us during yeah. the day, especially with my crazy summer schedule. I mean, it's this time of year is also tough. I, I thought we left it. At, uh, I would be okay meetings. with with one of us being there. I thought we left at one of at one of our last meetings. Whoever was available that day would go, or you go yeah. one other any other time if they marked the locations. Okay. You can go see. I mean, that's all you're doing, looking at. So. Right, but I think the, the thing that was productive last time was having a conversation about, well, if you could have it at this poll or yeah, this right. poll, we think this one's right. better, then it, it was, and I don't think we need all three of us there to do that. No, no. but the precedent's really important. That we're, again, we're improving communication. It's, it's, okay. it's no different than when we started to sit down with the Finance Committee on a regular yeah. basis to set up the budget. I mean, it's... I think, yeah, I think at least one of us should be there. It okay. might be nice if there's two of us, but I don't think we should make the requirements so stringent that all three of us have to be there to do that. Yeah. It's, that seems unreasonable. I would like, for example, I would trust yours and Fred's judgment on that. Two of us and Brian, I guess. My guess is, Brian, that I was a thorn in your side in terms of scheduling the last one. of them. You had one yeah, green, green spot. I had a green right. spot, right? That was it. Okay. Yeah. And I apologize for that. So if, you, so if it works for these guys, yeah, if we do an order yeah, of the dates. Yeah, I just couldn't do any of the dates after. <coughs> so you guys weren't available the day that I had. Yeah. Right. Yeah, nobody was afraid. So next week you were available beginning towards the next week, first and second, we were available. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually anytime you were first, second, third, third or whatever. Was fine with me. Yeah. So whatever was on that doodle poll, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Is that it? And then July fifth. Uh Lynn and I are both planning on taking July 5th off, which would mean that no uh -huh. one is in this building. Okay. You checked a sign going out the door and the website saying that I think the town yeah. offices are closed with the understanding that it is using paid leave. Right. Um, I think it might, would, it, would a rebel call me out of line? Just to let people know that uh, that Friday town offices are closed. I worry those um, are going out a lot, though. That's my only concern. That's, it's, People they're short and sweet. sweet. No, I, I, do you? If they're short and sweet yeah. messages, then town you know, office is going to be closed. Oh, I didn't need it. Then don't worry. I mean, I'm lucky if you listen to my answering machine when I went every couple weeks. So well, I, we're talking Friday mornings, right? Is, is Friday afternoons, is anybody here usually? Um, we, we are not open Friday afternoons. No, open yeah. Friday afternoons. So all you're really talking is Friday mornings. Sometimes right. the door's locked and we're here. Right. And sometimes the door's open and we're here. Okay. And, and uh, other people that need the access to the building can come in anyway, right? Whether they're here or not. I was told today, everybody has a key, so what's the point of locking it? <laughs> oh, we still lock it, of course. Yeah, but I mean, whether no, it's yeah. officially closed, they can still come and go as they want. Yeah. Anybody that has a key can come. Yeah. Right, but, but you can't come and do business is the point. No, that right. if you need to come and pay your taxes or whatever service that the town offers that you might need. I think people who might need to do some business with the town next week would probably appreciate the heads up that don't wait till Friday, do it Wednesday. And that's all I'm saying. And and it might be yeah. that not everybody will, will care one way or the other, but the oh, people who do, who, who may need yeah. that would probably appreciate yeah. it. Oh, fine. So. Fine. Especially if we could couple that with the Hey, there's a special town and meeting. And a special on town meeting on July 31st. Oh, okay. Do the, do the, uh, all right. Okay. Oh, and school. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I, is there any more on your list? Um, nothing pressing. <laughs> My list is very long. Oh, your list is long. We should have started you at 7.30. <laughs> I could talk for that long. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, well, then, I guess I would entertain the motion. You're the chair. You can just gather us. I can, motion. really? I don't need a motion to no, adjourn? Right second, All right. Second motion. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. I really like to do things I find, you know, consensus as much as possible. All right. We are adjourned. Yeah.
Thanks, everyone.